Welcome to the show. We're going to start off by talking about everyone's favorite subject. How much money have we lost today? And new CPI <laughs> numbers have come out. The inflation rates are soaring. So let's dive straight into them. So the latest inflation numbers say that it's been a rise of 7.5% in the past year which is astronomical. It is a 40-year high. This keeps getting to higher and higher levels. If we break it down by looking at uh, all these different metrics within that, wages are rising at a, the fastest pace in at least 20 years. We have electricity prices surging 4.2% in January alone. It is up 10.7% for a year earlier. Uh, you've got used cars, 41%. That's a pretty big number there. And then we've got, you know, uh, airfare, food costs, like all kinds of things. The basic takeaway from this is your money, your cash in your bank account is losing value at an astronomical rate. And we're looking at the Bitcoin prices. It seems that people are recognizing this because it does seem to be uh, building a little bit of momentum in a bullish direction. Obviously, you know, different factors working at, at play here. When news like this comes out, we know that the Fed is going to react, probably going to raise interest rates. So the people who are day traders, you saw a big dip in Bitcoin price. But now the long term trajectory continues to be upwards as people realize that they've got to get their money out of cash and they're looking for other assets. Let's dive into all of this, what this means for us uh, <laughs> as a global economy. I'm going to throw it to you, David, to start off with. What was your take? Uh, yeah, so uh, obviously it's not great. It's not what we hoped for. Uh, I personally am still optimistic that uh, a lot of this is uh, sort of uh, supply chain related. Um, but after months and months of these reports, uh, because it is a 12 month moving average, you do have a lot of weight where that number is not going to go down sharply um, for for a little while for sure. Um, and on the uh, the Bitcoin inflation hedge thing, I think there are two important things to, to emphasize. Um, one is that yes, as you as you pointed out, um, interest rates going higher in general is bad for risk assets, um, and crypto for the most part is still a risk asset. Um, arguably, when it comes to Bitcoin, that is even still true. So it's something for people, just the public, to keep in mind. The idea that Bitcoin is an inflation hedge. Um, is still somewhat of a theory. There are structural reasons to believe that it's true, uh, but on, a, on an in-person, real-time basis, we still are not 100% confident that that's how it's actually going to play out. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that uh, this, is, this is definitely blown past transitory at this point. I think we can say that. Jen, you want to dive in? Every time we talk about inflation, I think about the human element. And in this article, they... Tell the story of a woman named Courtney Lucky who used to be able to fill her grocery cart for $100. And now I think we can all relate. $100 doesn't really get you much in the grocery store. And it's it's people like this that I think about when we talk about the inflation rate. If we just strip, her, strip out all of the politics, it's just, you know, how are families going to live day to day when things are so so expensive. And for a long time, Naomi, David, Will, we've been talking about Bitcoin as an inflation head and hedge. And and now Bitcoin is so closely correlated to traditional markets. So as, just coming back to what you were saying, David, it's such a frustrating situation. But I think the call for education is still there. You know, if people like Courtney can be more educated on alternative ways to store her money. Maybe she can get more out of that cash sitting in her bank account and maybe crypto is an alternative. So it is frustrating, but I think that this story just really still calls for education in so many areas of finance. But Naomi, I'll kick it back up to you. Yeah, well, it does lead us back to this fatal conceit of a centrally planned economy. The Federals are determining that, yes, they have all of the knowledge that they can run the economy and determine interest rates and print as much money and there'll be no consequences. I wanted to bring up a chart here uh, from the St. Louis Federal Reserve. So this is an N1 data, N1 money chart. You can also look at the N2 money charts, but just look at that. So you can see that tiny little bit of tapering at the top, which means that they've started to lower the rate at which they are astronomically 
actually uh, printing vast amounts of money. The fact that they're still printing huge amounts of money when we have, you know, inflation numbers at 7.5%, we have used cars up 40%, you know, it, it is a little bit mind boggling. And it makes me wonder whether these people are even second guessing their position and their foresight. Like, I mean, it's obvious when you look at this, if you quadruple the money supply in a year, yes, everyone's value uh, is going to go down. Everyone's purchasing power is going to go a lot less far. So it's really sad to see all these bureaucrats destroying the value, as you said, Jen, of all of these people. I mean, this hurts the, the poorest people. It hurts the middle class as well. I mean, the, the rich people, they're going to put, be putting their money into other assets. They're going to be investing in the SAP. They're probably all in credit and investors. So they have all these investment opportunities that will help safeguard their wealth. But the poorer people are actually blocked from entering any of those markets and have uh, far less opportunities when it comes to safeguarding their wealth. So it's a really sad situation. And I'm just grateful that Bitcoin exists as an alternative money because I don't want one that's controlled by these bureaucrats who keep inflating away our purchasing power. But I think I saw your hand go up, David. I'll throw it back to you. Yeah, just like one totally non-crypto related comment about the inflation numbers um, as, as kind of advice for people out there, which is if you haven't noticed, everybody's changing jobs right now. And if you're not looking around at changing jobs, you should be because um, a lot of people get hired on new jobs, get it at higher salary rates. So from just a strictly personal perspective, um, as you're in a high inflation environment, be on the job market as much as you can, I would say. Will, did you, uh, did you have a little tick there? Yeah, I wanted to go back to your first point, which was interesting to me is the su supply chain part of this, right? It's always interesting when you're looking back in the history textbooks about times of inflationary events, say like the late 70s, early 80s. And a lot of people were back then commenting about how there was issues with gasoline markets or issues with like manufacturing in the United States and like Japan was rising in its economic power. And people blamed a lot of these issues for why inflation was uh, becoming a hot issue in the United States economy. But if you also look at the money printing that happened a decade prior because of the Vietnam War, a lot of people also blame that. So it just gets very muddled very quickly. And I think we see the same situation right now, right? We have this huge influx of dollars that was printed to offset uh, the COVID pandemic coming in and kicking everyone to the couch. And they were handing out money to be able to uh, allow people to spend money to keep the, the cogs going. Well, there's also like that supply chain crunch that came along with it. And then there's there's other issues that get involved, right? So the the his the historical look at this becomes really interesting in five to ten years. What are people going to blame and where is Bitcoin going to be placed in this is really what I'm looking at and curious about. Naomi, I'll throw it up to you for the last thoughts. Yeah, just quick final thoughts because I it always bothers me when people look at the money printing and attribute it just to, oh, we're helping people, we're giving stimulus checks, we're getting people back on their feet. When we when the, the second bailout was approved, trillions of dollars from the first money printing episode had yet to be spent. And a lot of this money is just going to corporate bailouts and, and lining the pockets of, of, of corporations that, I mean, it's, it's, it's not a fair distribution of this system. It is really heavily being weighted uh, towards people who have political relationships. And so, again, it's just a very unfair situation that is hurting the poorest in our economy. 